today. A new GPU can pull 1200 watts. Ryzen 7000 is on track. Intel's flagship Arc GPU is a beast. And Nvidia, Intel, and AMD have a new gaming GPU competitor. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, Nvidia officially announced their new flagship GPU. And while this is a bit old, there's still some really interesting news that not many are discussing. And it really tells us a lot about next gen. So what am I talking about? Well, Nvidia officially announced their RTX 3090 Ti. Ti. And for starters, it's pretty much exactly what was leaked. The GPU comes with a full 10,752 cores, slightly faster clocks, really not much of a difference between it and the 3090, except for two big things. First up is price. While not much faster than the 3090, the 3090 Ti is a whopping $2,000. So yeah, it's definitely made for those who are looking for the best of the best and don't care how much they spend to get it. Of course, the 6950 XT is rumored to come as well, so it may not be the best for long. We shall see. The second and biggest difference is the connector. Like the leak said, it comes with a brand new 16-pin PCI Express 5.0 connector. If you've been following this channel, you know that it's a new connector that's set to come on new PSUs and deliver a whopping 600 watts of power. Now remember that the leaks claimed it would be on the 3090 Ti to get users ready for next gen. Well, remember when I speculated that some next gen cards may include two of them? Um try this gen, as both Galax and EVGA have released custom 3090 Ti's with two PCI Express 5.0 connectors. That means each card is capable of pulling as much as 1200 watts for just the GPU. Basically, next gen truly could be the power hogs we've been hearing about. Let's just hope they don't cost more than a car. And of course, with absurd prices like this, you've got to save money. Luckily, you don't need to overspend to protect your data with today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. The VPN service that's got everything you need and more for just $1.99 a month. So they do what all VPNs can, from encrypting your data to hiding your IP address. But they really do so much more, like the fact that you can use Atlas VPN on unlimited devices all at once. They have a no log policy and support 4K streaming. And speaking of streaming, Atlas VPN unlocks geo-restricted content on a ton of your favorite streaming apps, so it gives you more options than ever before. And with 4 million users and over 500 servers, you know they're doing something right. Plus, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, all for just $1.99 a month for three years when you visit my link in the description. You owe yourself the savings and peace of mind that only Atlas VPN can give. Next up for today, it looks like AMD's on track to release their Ryzen 7000 CPUs. In a new tweet from the well-known leaker Graymon55, he claims that Raphael, which is AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7000 desktop CPUs, are about to enter mass production. He later specified that AMD will begin mass production either April or early May. For example, Ryzen 5000 started production in July and launched in November, so Ryzen 7000 should come even sooner. This would make it sometime in early Q4, and that would be right around the time Intel's Raptor Lake releases. Let's just say I'm excited. Next up, Intel's Arc GPUs look to be even better than we thought. Here I actually have a few different stories that show this, starting with the fact that Intel apparently disclosed the transistor count of their flagship GPU, and it's 21.7 billion transistors on a 406 mm squared die. That's interesting because it's significantly more than Nvidia's GA104, which makes up the 3070 and 3070 Ti, as well as AMD's Navi22, which makes up the 6700 and 6700X. XT. Of course, transistor count doesn't mean it performs better. The architecture is pretty much everything, but given Intel is even near AMD or Nvidia, these GPUs could be way faster than we thought. And with that, we actually have some of the first benchmarks of their new A350M. As you can see, it was benchmarked in Firestrike and TimeSpy. Now, these scores aren't all that great. They're right around the GTX 1650. But keep in mind that this is Intel's lowest in part, and if they stick to the wattage, it only gives 
gets as high as 35 watts. Their A770M has over five times the cores and much higher clocks. Basically, their highest end model may be able to compete closer to, say, the 3080. Of course, that's if everything scales perfectly, so this isn't going to be exact, but it's a good sign. Not only that, but 3D Center noticed that Intel looks to have teased the clocks of their highest end desktop GPU. During their ARC control presentation, Intel showed a GPU with a GPU clock of 2250 megahertz and 175 watts power draw, so their desktop parts should be a good jump in performance over their mobile GPUs. With that said, AMD was throwing some shade as they tweeted out this graph comparing the A370M to their 6500M. Time will tell how well everything stacks up, but things are looking very interesting. And lastly for today, we have a brand new contender to not only the GPU space, but specifically the gaming GPU space. Over the years, we've seen a few companies crop up that are working on GPUs, but primarily those have been for servers. But there's now a new Chinese company called More Threads, which is headed up by a former VP and general manager for Nvidia. And they just announced the development of two new gaming GPUs, and they even showed it gaming. But before I get to that, let's talk specs. The two GPUs are called the MTT S60 and the MTS 2000. Both GPUs are made from a 12 nanometer process using the Musa architecture. According to the company, the S60 comes with 6 teraflops of computational power and 8 gigabytes of LPG DDR4X memory, while the MTS 2000 gets 12 teraflops of power and 32 gigabytes of memory that they haven't set. The architecture apparently supports DirectX, OpenGL, OpenCL, Vulkan, as well as Nvidia's CUDA, which is definitely an odd one. I don't know if they mean something like AMD's Botsman initiative or full-on support. Regardless, the card was actually demoed running League of Legends. Now, it was only at 1080p and they didn't share anything else, so it likely isn't that powerful, but it's interesting to see new competition crop up. AMD and Nvidia don't just have Intel to worry about anymore. So while that does it for today, are you excited for a new GPU competitor? And what do you think about Intel's new ARC GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.